Welcome back and thank you for staying with Checkpoint now to into our discussion when we talk about corruption, the war on corruption and the cost of corruption in general. And joining me for that particular discussion to my far left is Gabriel Muduma, who's a political analyst. And of course, we have next to me Professor Fredo Gola, who's a governance and policy expert and equally a director at Trailblazer Business Strategies. Gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Ashley. I'm happy you're here. Actually, yes. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, thanks for us once again. Okay. So, Prof, I'll start with you because you said, you know, we need to break down the cost of corruption before we even continue with this conversation. So, let's start at that. Break it down for us. Yeah. By the way, let me start by thanking you, Ashley and the uh, team, KTN, for having used the word cost of corruption. In fact, when I saw it, I went and did some research and found out that if you look at uh, IMF is saying, that the world is losing 5% mm -hmm. of the national of the world global GDP on corruption. That is $2.6 trillion. If you now come to the UN, the UN actually is saying that the world is losing $13 trillion. And now when we come home, because we don't want to involve Kenyans in what I called last time when I was gave on what's called uh, money illusion, yeah. uh, ESCC says that we lose 7.8% of the national GDP, which is 608 billion uh, Kenya shillings annually. Uh, and now if you look at what now the president is trying to do now by saying he wants to cut on the, on the 3 billion uh, shillings budget, I'm sure he does not need to go very far. He has just, just even just reduce this by half. Yeah. And uh, in fact, last time when I discussed with Gabe, last time I was trying to tell him that the finance bill is trying to address the wrong problem because the problem has never been the re revenue, the problem expenditure. And if you are losing this amount of money to corruption, then I guess maybe even Gabe will want to be concerned. But if you leave this material cost of corruption, can you believe that after the young people have seen continuously that people steal money and nothing happens, mm -hmm. a survey showed that over 78 percent of young people don't want to know how you make money but how you spend it so the cost is not just in terms of how much money we are losing but the moral decay it comes with whereby some people have said it's acceptable to bribe it's acceptable to accept a bribe and it could be unacceptable if you don't ask for something in favor for offering a service yeah for me that's a bigger cost than actually even the financial cost because you can change the financial cost but the behavioral cost is very expensive. Okay. Yeah. So picking it up from where you've <coughs> left off, you know, 7.8% of our G GDP annually. I mean, from where you sit, do we have a weak link? And if so, who is the weak link? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, actually, I think we have a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the longest, I think we've noted that problem. Yeah. And I've told people, not once, not twice, uh, that I believe the reason why we have such high skills of corruption it's not because we don't have a very strong penal code, no. Uh, it's because people do the vice and they get away with it. Okay. That is the major problem, number one. Yeah. You do the dirty vices and all the opportunistic elements of corruption, fully well knowing that you can get away with it. Hmm. So that is the problem, number one. That is why I think for the longest, for the longest, we have not had a leader, let me say that, okay. who definitively established a system to deal with corruption. What am I saying? The first executive order we saw mm -hmm. was un unprecedented. Mm -hmm. It has never happened in the history of this country. Yeah. Was where the president, upon being sworn in, declared financial independence to the primary offices that deal with corruption, namely the National Police Service, the DCI, and the judiciary. It has never happened. What was he saying? What was he doing? Furthermore, he moved on a little bit. The people he had as free hand to hire and bring on board to assist in his administration, these are the PSS and uh, the CSS, yeah. he opened up an avenue where the lawmakers can call them into parliament and question them. It has never happened. All right. So here you have <laughs> somebody who has not only instituted facilities that will assist in fighting corruption head on, he has also said these people that I've hired, they will not 
only take directives from me. Okay. You lawmakers are free to call them into parliament to come and answer questions. Now, many people, including myself at some point, we thought, ah, this, this may be some of the gimmicks that we've seen in the past. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, how things have gone on historically, you would have come and arrested me. Probably I've done some multi-million, some multi-billion corruption deal. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in a criminal facility, you get what you used to hear orders from above. Guess what, Ashley? Mm -hmm. That's long gone. Okay. The president has promised he has never, and he will never, call those institutions to tell them or sway them in any way. To me, and to many Kenyans, yes, we may sometimes, uh, uh, the Kenyans, the most <laughs> the Kenyans we are, yeah. we may feign ignorance, but that is a huge statement. When you make institutions that are mandated by the constitution to fight corruption, okay. when you give them the autonomy, and most importantly, yes. the financial independence. Oh, uh, before you, I even give you a chance to respond to that, it's just today we were saying, um, I've forgotten the name, I think NIA, complaining that the DPP is being brought back to the NIS. And guys were wondering, you know, when you talk about the independence, You're right. just <clears throat> In the past eight months, I think we've seen around eight cases being dropped. Right. The same people who are involved in these cases, allegedly, yes. have been reappointed to yes. executive positions. Now, I'll answer that. Okay. As much as we've seen some drop, we've also seen some that have actually been executed properly. Now, you need to ask yourself, why this? Why not the rest? There has been, historically, we saw... And I think this is what the president was trying to run away from. Yeah. We saw politics play in the grand scheme of criminal or, if I can put it correctly, the underhands that we saw within our criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. That somebody could be called and told, you know what, find out what we can use against Ashley. And before you say cut and a half, you wake up in the morning and you have DCI officers waiting for you at your doorstep. You've done nothing. You are hauled from one police station to another, which is actually politically motivated. Mm -hmm. And then you expect the DPP to really get that file and take it in front of the... Uh, uh, seriously? And that's what he was saying. We knew at one point, actually, okay. if you are to be honest, we knew there was a huge disconnect. We saw that. So you think we, there was political a disconnect. Of okay. course, there was a major disconnect between the office of the ODPP and the DCI at one point. And sometimes you were asking, how can this be that these two offices are not marinated to ensure that people don't get away with some of these criminalities that we are witnessing? Okay. And then we came to find out that actually most of these things were politically instigated. Where do you take that? All right, Prof, I yeah, know you wanted so, to jump in. So thank you very much. By, by the way, Ashley, today when I saw you are, you are poster for this show, I went to Twitter and I tagged you and I said that uh, corruption already has been institutionalized in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Therefore, corruption needs to be fought, not by personalizing, by saying, I'll arrest Gabe, I'll arrest Fred, I'll arrest Ashley, to having institutions that are fighting corruption. Right. So we need to institutionalize right. the fight towards corruption so that we do not personalize. No, actually I told you, I hate personalization. Where UDA, Azimio, Raelo Dinga, Ruto, we need to have our institutions working. So if the president fought corruption as the president, yeah. if, he, if he leaves office and somebody comes tomorrow, we can still have corruption. But if judiciary uh, we have institutions like uh, Parliament. We have institutions like, let's say, um, uh, ESCC working. In fact, I've always even said that we need to take away institutions like IPOA should be removed from there, and we have strong civil society. Okay. ESCC should be closed because since they came in, Kenya has never seen its value. They have a budget of around 16 billion shillings annually. We have never seen anything coming from it. So I can tell you that for sure, 
the, what the president is doing, don't be excited too early. For me, I don't get excited too early. I still wait and see what are the real results. Mm -hmm. Results will be seen the following. First, with the, cause, with the case about the DPP, uh, the one who has been appointed, Haji, with the cases we withdrew, Kenyans could have regained something like 11.3 billion. billion shillings. Yeah. If we miss that money, what credibility does he have now to go to the to, to become the spy master? Mm -hmm. We need to sh prom promote people because he should go home if he didn't deliver. In Kenya, when you don't deliver some somewhere, you are taken somewhere else. This is what I call recycling non-performance, and okay. that for me is sad. And then the other thing which will show you that corruption is being fought. When you see officer in government being afraid of even joining government because they know that if you joke, you can go to book. There are some countries like Rwanda whereby if you are appointed, first of all, you have to go with your family to church for prayer. Because if the corruption case is found against you, you'll go inside. But survey is now showing among young people, they would prefer either to do a tender with the government or work inside government or go to politics because they believe that's where you can make quick and easy money without effort. Mm -hmm. Since survey is still showing that government offices are attractive in ways of making money for people, in ways people can become rich quickly, still no one can tell you that corruption is being fought. Okay. And uh, I can even tell you now, forget about even what these guys are saying. Let's ask ourselves a question here which is very important. Is the president uh, ex uh, starting to initiate the corruption war because he wants to take advantage of some offices. For example, you go to, Ke uh, to Kemsa, you go, for example, to Kebs, where some people in those offices need to go home so that some people can be replaced. We should ask that question. The second question is, are there some appointments he made he's not happy about that corruption can be used? Because if you want to fight corruption, let us see it in all segments of government. Mm -hmm. Let us see it in all arms of government. Let him start from his office. Let him go to his deputy president, deputy, because actually uh, Gachago had a case of 7.5 7 billion shillings case, which was dropped by o o ODPP. Now he is now going to DCI. You see how this is now again being played. So Kenyans, for me, let us not be excited by speeches. Let us be excited by the numbers. How much money is being recovered? Because that money has been lost. Where is it? Sugar case you see now. Is it that there's a deal that went wrong? You know, sometimes when you see the same uh, internal people being whistleblowers to themselves, you, you need to ask yourself, are they doing it out of goodwill or they have not agreed on something okay. or a deal has gone wrong so everybody is trying to name other so a thief is naming a thief. We okay. have to be very careful about that. Oh, prof but let's give the president a benefit no, of the I'm doubt. Saying, I'm, yes. saying, I'm giving doubt but I'm saying let us not be excited. Let's let us wait, wait for, for the, the following. Okay. Let us see numbers is recovering. Money recovering because Kenyans money have been lost. Secondly, let us start seeing people thinking twice before they go to a government office knowing that if you joke, William Bruto his Excellency the President will deal with you. Okay. When we see <laughs> that one, then I'll come here and upload him in this very show. Okay, okay. Yes. Get actually, coming to you, yes. <laughs> actually, let me talk about two things that are hot on the hills, uh, you know, uh, in the past two weeks. One uh, is what our Prof has actually alluded to, uh, Kemsa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I find it funny that he can say, uh, was there wrong appointments or, or are, you, are you removing people from that office to replace them with... Um, we didn't hear about Kemsa just the other day. Kemsa has had issues back to back. And at one point, I think the who's who's, uh, who are very closely tied mm -hmm. uh, to the former regime, were mentioned back to back. And that was a point whereby you still had the DCI in office. You had uh, nearly half of the people probably who were sent home from Kemsa were still in office. What has the president done this time? There's something our viewers may not know. But do you know there's no money that was lost during this period when the president, William Ruto, is firing people? Many people but, don't but know that. But money was Wait lost during the scandal. Wait a minute. As we speak right now, it was a flawed procurement process where money was going to get lost. It was arrested before any money moved. This was on Kemsa. Mm -hmm. People have been sent home. You're not just talking people. You're talking about a very senior officer, a PS, 
who was on her way to Europe with a delegation of nearly 17 people, mm -hmm. who was stopped right on her tracks from traveling, and she was sent home. But just, okay, as, as you finish your point right. here, let, let's, let's not forget the issue of prosecution. Yes. The inspiring. And, and that's where I was coming. That's where I'm coming to. Okay. And I want to tie these two so that you can also understand where this thing is going. It is actually, a, it, it, it is intertwined within the presidential office or the presidency and the institutions that he made. He made independent as far as finances are concerned. You'll see how they tie in. These people have been let go. Very senior people within that department. Mm -hmm. You know what we are waiting for now? Yeah. We are waiting for the DCA to go in. We are waiting for investigation. We, we are waiting for the investigations to go in. The entire chain of how that process was bungled, we expect people to start seriously being held to court. Okay. Because right now, as I told you, mm -hmm. the president came out, came out and said just, it was actually this weekend, if I'm not wrong, or I think last week, somewhere. And I, again, I said some of the pronouncements that have been made, Prof, mm. are very unprecedented. They have never happened. I have never had a head of state in this country coming out to take personal responsibility on any theft in his administration. That's what the president said. And you can quote him verbatim. He said, I take personal responsibility of any amount that will be lost. That if, now let me tell you, if that is not, if that is not a serious move for somebody who is deep core, ready to fight corruption, uh, before, then yeah. you have to tell me what it is. The second one, very quickly, okay. very quickly, is obviously the sugar. I'm talking about. First of all, this deal of the sugar started in 2019. If we are to be honest, again, we have to be honest, mm -hmm. right? And we have to keep things with the flow that they are in. True. 2019, it started. Major problem number one, number one, was whoever turned or said, oh, wait a minute. Now, this sugar, we all know, has been condemned. We now need to work a way for it to become industrial ethanol. That was problem number one. Big mistake. Because you know what you want to achieve may not be achieved literally because of the people who are in that office okay. and that is why you that particular consignment found itself in in our shops probably that's where it is but what has happened as we speak nearly 27 senior true officials, senior officials Kere, Kepsa. We, Kepsa, even dci yeah guess what they've been suspended which you is why if that is not a step in the right direction. You need to tell me what it is. We do agree that it's the step towards the right direction. We completely agree with that. And we do appreciate the president for taking that goodwill. But let's not forget, even going back in history, we see this happening. We see people getting fired. We see people getting arrested. Investigations are happening. And then it goes cold. That's what we're trying to talk about. The fact that will this fight against corruption go all the way? L let, me, let me tell you what I believe, Prof. I'm, Actually, give yes. me time. Let me tell you what... Uh, okay. Uh, let me tell you what again. Me, I'm an economist. Right. In God, we trust that us bring numbers. <laughs> These stories don't excite me. In fact, the best rhetorics in fight of corruption are the worst <laughs> in fighting that very corruption. Mm -hmm. So for me, Gabe, what we are waiting for, William Bruto was in government with Uru Kenyatta. And William Rupert was standing here and Uru Kenyatta said, we lose two billion every day in corruption. Yeah. We want that money. I've told you, ESCC, which is an agency of government, has said we are losing 608 billion shillings per year. What I want the president to say, last year, during Uru Kenyatta, we lost 608 billion. In my presidency, I have said for you, 6.8 billion, here it is, this road is there, that hospital is there. That's what we'll talk, because in strategy, we say that there's what we call leading variables and lagging variables. Leading variables are what people see. Are we seeing cost of living going down because cost of corruption has gone down? Are we seeing infrastructure projects going down? Because I've done analysis, by the way, I'm an economist, I've done analysis and found out that countries that are less corrupt collect 4% in terms of revenue much more than countries that are more corrupt. Which means that 
corruption has a positive correlation with revenue collection. We are making noise about collecting taxes. The president also has to find a way on which he has to assure us that this money being collected is going to the right thing. Okay. For me, I don't want to hear about, uh, you know, heads will roll. Their heads are rolling and they're rolling with money. Kenyans are dying of hunger. They don't have education. They don't have health care. I'm looking at the actual where is this money going. Mm -hmm. Actually, tomorrow, if you tell me that we have built a hospital with money we recovered from KEMSA, that's a then I'll hear from you. Yeah. If you tell me that the money which I'll be, for example, even that sugar thing you're talking about, I can tell you, that thing people have disagreed. This government, there's nothing that happens under the nose of the government, the government knowing. The president has intelligence, get briefs every day. He started knowing these things a long time ago, even when he was deputy president, he had access to it. What you want to see is how are we preventing, first of all, from getting these things coming on board? Because also there's this character whereby PS is not as senior as the president. There are some people, there's a minister in that ministry, and the minister is called Moses Korea, <laughs> Minister for Trade, isn't it? That minister has history, isn't it? Yeah. And his history is what is boiling down. Is these people being sacrificial lambs on behalf of some people? You know, you know let me tell you what, it doesn't make sense dismissing somebody like Pierce if the real culprits are there. Let, let me tell you what, it is so hard as I know this government works for a Pierce to do some things which are wrong under the nose of a CS. It's very hard. Remember that, remember that Moses Kuria is not the person you know. Moses Kuria is somebody who is very hands on. So I can tell you, let us know how is the CS uh, con contractor there? Is it that there's a deal that went wrong and people disagreed? Let us investigate before we make noise. And then what are we going to recover? How are we going to change cabs? When they replace the, C the D director general for cabs, is it done in the right manner? Like you see, you see the, the same thing now. Let's go again now to, to the one of Central Bank. Eh? You see uh, Kamau Thuge, isn't it? Has been named to be the next governor for Central Bank. This person had a case with Rutich. Rutich was with him in the ministry when money was being stolen then. The credibility issue in Central Bank. In KRA, Mwaura is known to be the best tax evader is in KRA. Now you come to Haji, who has never prosecuted any serious case now is going to become a spy master. Uh, you know, when you look at it, you wonder whether this is drama or Kenya Kwanzaa is thinking that we are not analyzing these things. Now look at the other thing which is very painful. This is very painful now and it's coming. The Osoduma number, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 18 million Kenyans were registered to Oduma number. Now the government is saying they want to institute a digital ID, work with Pakistan, investing 10.2 billion shillings in, they say they don't want to carry the value of Duma number, which means that the money invested in Duma number is going to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. They come with a new one. This is another scam. <laughs> so for me, this is a scam because why do we need to invest 10.2 billion shillings with Pakistani <laughs> to do a new ID number? <laughs> okay. yet? So I'm, I'm trying to tell, I want, I want us wait, to see. Wait, 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 wait. I, I really pray that you had the same urge when Huduma number was being rolled out. So when it was being rolled out, we knew it was a scam. All right? We knew it was a scam. And at some point, Prof, I think you must do justice to yourself. Because, first of all, I would like to believe, me and Ashley, you know, you, you are the professor. I'd like to believe that you interpret things very different from the way my cousin, True. who sells Mihogo, and, and, and he has allowed me to say these yeah. things, interprets things. True. Because I would expect knowledge to precede some of the things that you were saying. You were mentioning Moses Kuria, which we, and this was a problem with the previous. They used to point at you and by the mere fact of pointing at you, they resound to the very fact that you're guilty. And that, see, see, these are the problems that we face as a democratic country where we say we have laws and everybody is subjected to the law of the land. All right? Mm -hmm. The mere fact that I'm pointing at you does not insinuate or should not insinuate that you're guilty. True. You're, you're the innocent laws of the land guilty. actually yeah. demand and dictate that you must go through all the merits of a judicial system for you to be proven either guilty or innocent. True. Now, here we are not talking about uh, the issues that we know have been happening with sugar. Mm -hmm. Now, in 
in case Prof thinks that we may be holding fort for any CS, let me say this. If any person is found culpable, he should face the full wrath of the law. Whether they are a PS, whether they are a CS, whether it's somebody who's as close as a brother to the president. What I do not want is some of the gimmicks that we had from years back. Where somebody comes and says, we are losing two billion per day. What are you doing about it? Yeah. Eh, 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 the buck stops with you. And at some point, we questioned, I was among the few people who are questioning this. If you are the head of state, sitting with all the intelligence that you're given on a daily briefing, if you can lose two billion of our taxes, you don't demand to be in that seat. Okay. You Surely. I completely agree with, with what you're saying, but you've talked about the law and the yes. fact that we're supposed to be equal Correct. Mm -hmm. when it comes to the law. But Correct. is that really the case? No. Don't we have what I may term as big fish? No. And this is what we should run away from. Okay. And I think we are not appreciating the true genius of what the president did. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll support him 120%. The true genius is we've been complaining that there is this person who can pick a phone call and say, Ashley, even though umechukua elfu mia mbili ama umechukua milioni mia tatu za wanainchi, the president has made a call, we are going to let you go. The true genius is the president has given the independence, financial independence, which this institution has been crying about. We are unable to do. We are unable to, we are unable to follow this. We are unable to follow because we are cash trained. The president said, no, you are going to be and you are going to have an accounting officer in those institutions. And he realized it. It was among the first orders that he gave, executive orders, that he unleashed immediately after being sworn in. Okay. This, to me, this to me tells me, even though Prof will say we want to see the money, the first thing that it will <laughs> yes. tell me, yes. there is a deliberate attempt a serious deliberate attempt to fight that vice so the people now we are holding to account i want to know yes i want to know hey guess guess what the guys at kebs have been fired the guys from uh, kebs and you know dci and everything about the sugar they've been let go what is the next step because obviously the president has said i have done this you guys get out. I do not want to know who did what or who did who. Money here has been lost. The institution has been compromised. Credibility has been compromised. I don't want to hear anything. But I hope it's not, I don't want to hear anything. And then after a few months, not to another position. Mm. I, I, I really hope. Actually, I could tell you. Yeah. I could tell you. Uh, you know, I get too excited, uh, not very quickly. Because I'm an economist. We wait for numbers. President has been saying he's turning around the economy. We are waiting for it to turn around. Let's see actual numbers and figures. Let's be reported by independent authority. ESCC is an agency that the president actually has got some appointing authority there. They are still giving those statistics. Let us see whether the report for 2024 will be changed from 2023 because we can make noise. But the truth, the matter was said, Kenyans are suffering. And they are suffering, and this money, they just say around 20 billion stolen, 10 billion stolen. I don't know, we shall put 10 billion there. <laughs> Can you imagine if you are sleeping hungry today, where you are looking at a cup, you are looking at a child there, he cannot drink milk, this one can't drink porridge, and someone is talking about 10 billion. You know, how does it feel for you? No, let's just be honest here. You could talk about the issue of your, of your cousin who does Mogo. How does it feel when he has to peel Mogo and make a revenue which is very small? And maybe makes, for example, let's say make ten thousand a day. Then here some are selling ten billion. Mm. Can you imagine how many people have to pay taxes for ten billion to be put in the coffers? Then somebody just takes it. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I I think maybe I grew from poverty. Maybe I'm seeing it this way. Uh, maybe my background shows me that way. But I can tell you, what we are hearing people are talking recklessly. Someone says only ten billion was stolen. In fact, the president was seen to have said, no, it's only seven. It's not ten you're talking about. <laughs> you see, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm just giving you this. Fuck this are facts. Yeah. Right? What I want to hear from Kenya, 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 Kwanzaa government, first, let me say this. I appreciate the step, no matter how small it is. I believe that we need to institutionalize a fight, not personalize, like I agree with you. This has no point fingers. Moses Korea this, Moses Korea that, uh, PS this, PS that. If we have institutions that will work independently, and my fear, as I said to you, uh, actually, as I say this is a fact, that we have three arms of government. We have the executive, which is yeah. by the president. Yeah. We have the judiciary, 
headed by the, the Mata Chief Kome, Justice. Chief Mata Justice. Kome, yes. Then we have the Parliament, which is headed by the, the Speaker. Speakers. Are they independent? They are, they are not perceived to be independent. The perceptions Kenya are having, they are not yet independent. Let the President bring this back. And by bringing it back, I heard what he said that uh, he said that he's never called them, they have called him, isn't it? Yeah. The truth is them they know. For us, we don't hold their phones. But we want them to see when something goes to court, something goes to parliament. For example, there's a bill which there's public participation. And they say they'll, they say they'll, they'll, they'll pass, they'll pass it. A comma. Now, we are asking ourselves, the members of parliament have forgotten that they are not part of the government. No, they are part of government, but there's an arm of government to check the executive. The bill is coming from the executive to be checked by parliament. And then they are telling Kenyans do public participation. Then they told us use an email. I've written something I want to take to parliament. Accessing them is impossible. Uh, they said that send through an email. That email is bouncing. There's no <laughs> forum. There's no, I mean, no, I'm telling you the truth. Okay. I, I have it. I can send you. I'm going to say that. Let us be honest and talk about delivery. <laughs> President, President Kibaki was that president who never knew how to talk. If you put him here in an interview, how he turned around the coin, ah, it will turn it, don't worry, it will work. You but he was stunned. But then he turns it. <laughs> but when you are good in articulation, it's good. Let me tell you one thing. When I was in the university, I used to find that universities are very good in delivering something. They were never very good in auditing policies. If you audit them, you'll find they are very serious audit questions. But the ones who are doing all the wrong things, they pass all audit. They are very clean because they invest time to give impression they are clean. But the clean ones know they are so clean that they don't even know how to look clean. <laughs> so okay. I'm trying to say that we need to look at numbers and look at deliverables. And also let us not be quick. I like what the president said when he was interviewing me. He said that, you watch the space. Then the space didn't take two days, isn't it? Yeah. But for me, the space I want to watch is telling me, uh, Kenyans, I, d I d told you, we, uh, we are President Uhuru said he's losing two billion per day. I can confirm it is true or he's lying, isn't it? Okay. If it is true, I have saved that money and I put it into road, isn't it? And I put it into education. I put it into uh, sugar. Now another thing. Now let me tell you. He will say I'm wrong. Before but, we, no, we, we need to let important. Gabriel speak. Yeah. There is already a very big scandal, which is again coming. Is another scam which is coming. Mashambani, which has been a contract by the Kenya Trading Development Corporation to import these fertilizer subsidies. <laughs> There's really a case... We, we can't confirm that, no, 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 no. Prof. No, 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 those are allegations. No, I'm saying, prof. what I'm trying to say, actually, this, the, the, it's, it's, been, it's been published by even a, a media house, isn't it? It's not an allegation. They're trying to say they can't comment, but I'm trying to say that they, say they are being uh, spied, checking on how money is moving. Okay, what prof. I'm trying to say is, yeah. the president needs to close all these loopholes in a very drastic manner because if you if a house is leaking and you just uh, try to um, fill one hole another is still leaking it won't happen you have to seal these holes okay. together okay well, prof, I, th I think where, I, th I think where i'll direct you prof is where to get your facts and uh, the reason why i said you must interpret things very different you know because first of all of the weight the academic weight that you have. You and my cousin who sells Muhogo, who is my very good friend, I'm telling you, must not see things at the same level. I'm because if you are able to see things at the same level, we are going to question your credibility as far as your academic go. So the reason why he, I can understand when he says things like those, because I don't know where he's gotten his facts from. Mm -hmm. But from where you see it, Prof, if you hear something like that, you have to check it and recheck it. Because that, is, that, that, that should be the credibility of your existence. As a prof, people look up to you but for, All right. for, for facts. Now, okay. very quickly, prof, there's something that he's alluded to as far as uh, the changing of the economy goes. Let me tell you, Ashley, all of us, all of us are concerned about mm -hmm. um, the food prices. We are all concerned about the cost of living. But, again, I told you, something must precede just that thought and the excitement of, oh, wow, why, when will you turn them around? Yeah. Prof is an economist. And him being one, he must understand something called the economic degradation process. 
the economy of a nation is not subjected to a light switch where you put it on the economy is good where you put it off the economy is bad mm -hmm. it takes time a period of systematic abuse for an economy to go rogue mm -hmm. this is what we are witnessing and it actually has real parameters of how an economy can go bad it took kibaki serious time to turn around the kenyan economy as it will take president william ruto it is not like i'm telling you it's not a light switch and prof will tell you where you wake up one morning and you go and turn it on mm -hmm. we need a good economy no the gradation the degradation has come through like i'm telling you systemic abuse over the years whether you're looking at it on haphazard borrowing whether you're looking at it on leakages on 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 on, on governance it takes time and by the way something else prof may not tell you that there is a way you can create a superficial economy and people think everything yeah, is okay yet your economy is super bleeding and when you get to wake up you realize wow it's like the way we are told about cancer yeah it can just be chewing you pole pole and you. before you say cut and a half stage four so is the economy and so when you get to a point where you need to change the economy he will tell you he has very good examples i don't know whether you've listened to prof really but very good examples he will tell you about how singapore built herself he will tell you about church and how church and mao built china it was not a two-day a ten-year job it was a serious task combined with serious achievables people had to go to prison so then do you have faith in our institutions we must have faith no, do about, you i do have faith <laughs> because even prof will tell you yeah. if there's one thing and this i would like to say to our viewers as well okay if there's one thing that we must reignite mm. is the value system for love of country and the reason why i'm saying this is me and prof don't have another country that will go to yes. we were born here and probably to this we will die mm -hmm. and if that is to live out to the true meaning of what our country should be the first exercise that me and professor must do is to become patriots true patriots want to see a country progress True patriots want a country to be subjected to progressive advance at every stage. That's the name of the game. So we cannot be the first people to sit down and chastise a country that is trying to make inroads for a better tomorrow. But we can question it, right? We, of course, all the, the time. All the time. That but is why. But that is why I say, mm -hmm. and I'll give you an example. And I've given. I traveled somewhere. Blessed to travel someplace. And when I went, I found. I found youths. Of that particular nation mm -hmm. in fact it's in one of our it's in the, our region and let me tell you what these young people are doing they were actually selling their country through social media visit country xyz visit country xyz visit every person they actually carried a hashtag for six months guess what their economy improved by three percent to their gdp by selling their nation what does that tell you that the weight of our nation is a high universal appeal in a sense materially so can you imagine if 20,000 young men and women will sit down and sell their country knowing fully well the domino effects that can filter to our GDP mm -hmm. that when a tourist lands very shortly when our tourist lands in Jomo Kenyatta he gets an uber which your brother rides your brother makes money. Mm -hmm. They come to a hotel where your cousin is working as a chef. That's money made. It's a trickle-down effect. Amazing. Yeah. These are some of the things that we must understand. And at the same time, imagine 20, 50,000 Kenyans sit down mm -hmm. to chastise their country. Do you know the first thing that people and tourists will do? They'll just take, what is, what, what is this hashtag? If they don't love their country, how can how we? Can we? Yeah. So you can easily turn around the tide we just need to understand the sophisticates of our times the good tool that we use to abuse one another mm -hmm. can actually be yeah. our greatest undoing okay yeah. so let me just get yeah. here first of all let me tell you Gabe, uh, i agree with you with two things mm -hmm. and we have five minutes critical. gentlemen so keep it short okay. so the first thing i agree with you is that um, you cannot go and turn out the current money like a light switch. Correct. That is true. Uh, I've seen so many economies. I have turned out the Greece economy, the Correct. Portugal, exactly. and the rest. So that's true. But the, the, what I, I still put you to task is we should make the right decision to give hope that actually we are getting there. Absolutely. So Kibaki made one single decision of free primary education. Right. 
and we we rallied behind it people talked about it there was a very good will about it so money was able to be mobilized from developing partners and came to finance education it worked the second thing that uh, also you say that we can sell our nation and for me i can tell you i'm a serious patriot I'm a serious person. The only thing is that when you live in a country and you talk about the issue of Singapore, mm. Singapore used what is called best and brightest. Kim right. Wan-Yung went and got the best and brightest Correct. to work in his government. Correct. If you ask in Kenya Kwanzaa, <laughs> is it the best and brightest <laughs> that is in that government? You can Correct. answer that question. Yourself, but I won't say anything. Because you say, I'm sorry, I just say that Kim Wan-Yung went for the best and brightest because Kim mm. Wan-Yung said, a nation's prosperity is not inherited. Correct. That's it true. is it is built, it, it is made. It is built. And it's made by the people. Our greatest resource as Kenyans are us. Let me tell you in this region, there's no one better than Kenyans to have education. There's no decision we can't make as a country. I know so many dignified people can make great decisions, but what's happening is that if you're a performer, you have a problem. You understand? If you're a performer, you have a problem. People want people who are non performers. You can go to the biggest institution in this world. Uh, you can say, Gabe, a, a professor with me, my qualification, I'm jobless. How would I be jobless with my qualification in a country like Kenya that needs this thing? Right. There are people who need supervision university for PhD, masters and the rest, but I was declared jobless by university because of politics. That thing with my performance, you understand? So if those things are still happening, are we using our best and brightest to further the economy? Now I'm doing business, isn't it? That's why I'm surviving. I cannot teach now because okay. somebody has decided. So I would urge you, I would urge you to go and maybe even if the president has your ears and tell him what is key here that we want to look at, he does not have the social capital Kibaki had. You know when Kibaki came in, there was a lot of, uh, this rainbow thing gave him some social capital. So there was only no spending time to explain himself. He went to work. But unfortunately, because of the, how the election went to, this election, uh, Uru Kenyatta and Raela came out with the issue of Azimia, which are supposed to unite people. Unfortunately, it fell terribly with the BBI. Therefore, the country was a bit divided when we went to the election. So that didn't give a lot of goodwill to the next president. But you see, when Kibaku was elected, it was a rainbow moment where all Kenyans came together to get their presidents. And that was a good thing that was with Kibaki. President William Ruto did not have this goodwill. So let him build this goodwill, reach out to the people, those who are with him, those who are not with him, unite Kenyans. It is from there that people can sell Kenya in social media. But don't you think, Prof, that Kenyans are really united, but it, it only when it comes to politics Correct. that there's a problem? Correct. But that's what you can unite people politically because if you make some, if you make some statement by saying, I'll never be a friend of this or that, you understand? Then it is seen that you are doing it. For example, you've heard about the issue uh, that the country is being calendarized, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You had the president had to talk about it in the interview, and mm -hmm. he said that even if I appoint how many people from one community, other the same people from the same community are still on the street. Okay. I don't think that was right. Let him ensure that there is the equal division of jobs. And there's a formula even in the constitution. If you just take the 22 CS and pick from each and community is one community represented, go to the PS, pick another 22. You go to the CAS and pick another 22. You'll find in the end that Kenyan's face is there. The formula is the constitution. Why are you wasting time by saying you'll appoint them depending on whom we are comfortable with? Okay, way forward. You. you have the last remarks. Yeah, so yeah, let, let, let okay. me tell Prof. Uh, uh, today, I'll, I'll allow me to teach Prof. Okay. On one <laughs> prof. And this, I think, actually, we've gotten it wrong for okay. so many times. Mm -hmm. And in many times, this uh, time I made this uh, comment in another, uh, in another broadcast. And I was telling people, the face of Kenya should not be our tribal formation. Mm -hmm. We get it wrong every time. We say, you should, you should, from that village, from... No, 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 no. The face of Kenya should be an economic formation. But should it, it that, also be minute, inclusive? In that in that when you open it up to fair chances everybody banan is represented mm -hmm. and that is the weight of a good economy for instance it was just the other day the greatest democracy in the world as we call it mm -hmm. had their first black president after how many years of calling themselves Dick democracy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but even with that, you've produced professors. You've
produced enterprises, you produced companies. As people are arguing in some other countries, Boeing is still flying planes. As people are arguing, Ford Motor Company is still churning out cars. As other countries are saying face of something, iPhones are still coming from that great nation. It's called an economic formation. Because that is what, that is what people know. Today, if me and Prof were to land in New York, nobody will care whether you're Kenyan. What, what, we, what language you speak. Yeah. The only thing that they will mind about is that we are both Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Prof will tell them, you know, this man comes from this other side. They don't care about that. What's the value that you have brought? And to me, that is more important okay. than saying, Ile Kabila, Ile Kabila, Ile okay. Kabila. So, so our mind has to change. Uh, lastly, um, when we talk about the corruption that we started in Ashley, this is what we have to say it. I think it is the high time, Prof. We started telling our younger generation, mm -hmm. because I remember there was a study or a poll that was done where even young people say they supported corruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a bad mentality. We must start to teach these people, even though we can't blame them as much, because it is a society that has taken them to understand that when you see people splashing money, like we are seeing in social media, mm. people think that is the way to go. We need to take them back to the roots of an honest day's labor. That, to me, should be the underlying principle of personal progress. Okay. In 30 seconds, just to ask you this, you, you talked about equal opportunity. So with all the appointments that we're seeing happening, mm -hmm. would you say that is fair opportunity for all Kenyans, all tribes, Kenya in general? You need to understand, again, what you've just said, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you the reason why. As the head of state, you know, we only look, and again, this is a problem we do, back to back. Yeah. We look at the people that he appoints, who it's a very small number. And we want Kenya to fit in there. We say that has to be the face. That has to be the face. We get it wrong. What I want to see there is, is he able to deliver? That to me is what should matter to me. Okay. Is the president able to deliver? Because at some point, he has to choose the people yeah. who are going to assist him deliver his mandate. Okay. Whoever he chooses, we trust that he has done justice to not only the people of Kenya, but to himself, so that he cannot come back to us again and say, hey guys, you know, these people, no, you had free hand, Mr. President, to select and choose them. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is what would really form center stage. And you can underline it twice. Okay. That, when push comes to shove, yes. yeah. I really trust uh, actually, the uh, people actually, he has may actually I'll deliver. Put this 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. Yes. Gachagua said this is a shareholder business <laughs> and the president was asked whether he agreed and he said, go yeah. ask him, don't ask me, go ask him, which means we don't know his position, whether I suppose Gachagua or not. The second thing which he said very clearly, and I wrote that thing, I think we we're watching that thing with you actually that day, and he mm -hmm. said that I am appointing people whom I think I can work with. Correct. So I can compromise on pick anybody you can work with but deliver to the economy. Okay. So if we agree that you can even pick your tribesmen and work with you together, and the economy is turned around to the benefit of all Kenyans, we can agree that you can have them. Because even in China, I can tell you, there is nothing like that. In Chinese also, you appoint people who are members of the Communist Party. Correct. So let us not say only Kenya, but then they deliver. Like Xi Jinping said that, in one year, I'm going to create 12 million urban jobs and grow the economy by 5%, which is 20 trillion now, it will be 21 trillion after the end of the year. Then if he does that, even with his mother or his grandmother, I don't care. <laughs> but if here is whereby you bring these your people together, <coughs> you eat with them, everybody only smelling the, 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 the smell of the meat, and for us, we are outside, we are not in government, and we are not eating anything, but you come together and eat with them, then I have to. So me, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm giving the president time. Let us see whether you are working with these, your closest people, because they say they understand his budget, mm -hmm. yes. they understand his finances, they understand his situation, they understand the manifesto, mm -hmm. they understand the bottom line economic model. So I'm waiting for them to deliver. If they don't deliver, tell them the president, Mr. President did two things to us. First, you didn't ask us job and gave them to your clansmen, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Two, you kept us hungry because the economy didn't turn around. 
But for now, let me give Geb and his team time. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Professor Fred Ogola, governance and policy expert and equally director, Trailblazer Business Strategies, and of course, Gabriel Mutuma. As always, we'll be here next Sunday. Uh, <laughs> God